Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first episode of Darts Around the Globe, a series where we meet a new darts player from a new country every episode. My name is Pim Huberts from Darts Actueel and today is joining me a very special guest. He is not only an ambassador of South African darts but also African darts in general. It's seven time world championship participant Devon Peterson. This is Devin Peterson, and you're listening to Darts Around the Globe. Hi, Pim. Thanks for a lot for having me um, on your on your podcast, and it's amazing to join you and, and hopefully uh, share some great stories and and obviously insight on my career and obviously stuff happening back home. Yes, thanks for joining uh, joining Devin. Uh, well, how are you doing this crisis? Let's let's start with that. Yeah, I think it's a lot. It's it's not. The best situation, obviously, but obviously we make the 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 best of a worst of a bad situation. So yeah, I've been practicing a lot uh, or putting in um, enough hours in on a daily basis. Uh, in my in my esteem, like what I would think is is enough. And yeah, the online darts has taken off. So you get a lot of online requests to play games, and you can actually play everybody and anybody at different levels as well. So I'm still playing against. Uh, players amateur level and like an exhibition style and today I actually I'm playing with a team uh, in a competition which is uh, so, uh, 16 teams two PDC players in each team yeah and um, that's that's it's it's all just keeping busy until the the season kicks off again um, which is obviously stopped because of the the COVID-19 but yeah it's it's been it's been okay I mean um we we I'm quite used to being at home during the weekend and on weekends you're traveling so it's just I'm I'm longer at home now but I'm, I am starting to pull the little hair out of my head that I do have uh, because I I just want to get back onto the board and compete again. Yeah, um, what what a lot of players say is that because there's no real end date, they don't know uh, the next tournament they are gonna practice for. Is it does it make it more difficult for you to really practice like you used to do? Yeah, in the beginning, I think it was like that because it was so uncertain and everybody was saying that September is when we're going to return and so on and so forth. And I went through kind of a few weeks of not not kind of putting in solid practicing. But now I'm just kind of practicing till I, I in my head, I'm, I'm looking at next week I'm starting to compete. So I'll, com- I'll practice hard for that week as if I'm going to compete so that I'll be ready for the weekend. And if and then I'll take a break maybe on the Sunday and then back again as if I'm going to compete for the next week. So just staying mentally focused all the time. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of my remedy to that and, and just making sure that I'm mentally prepared. You had a great season, 2020 season uh, start at least. What do you think of this big break now? Is it difficult for you or do you think, well, I can spend more time with my family now? It's It's fine. Um, it's look. The thing is, is my my. I know the the the, the not the sudden burst of form, but the the consistency of the form has has, has come has started in twenty twenty, and also playing ton averages and, and getting noticed um, by many people. Um, but I know that it's come. This is this has been in in the works for the last two years. So I've been practicing it really well, but just not. Uh, putting it over into the game and, and fortunate for me with my new sponsorship with Trinidad and Condor, their equipment has elevated my my ability and my potential and now it's coming to show uh, to, to to form basically and and I think that the stock came at the right time because I was on such a high. Um and I think that I just needed to comprehend exactly what was happening and just get to make sure that my consistency my con my level of consistency is maintained. So the break for me, came at the right time because now I could I could kind of hone my skills, get used to playing at that level consistently. Because I know that when you're playing at the PDC, pressure does build up, and and that's why you see a lot of players obviously perform at a level, but then they also then dip off at some point because the pressure is so much, and you kind of start playing messing in your head. Um, so yeah, I think it was a great break. I didn't expect it to be this long, but I don't think it will affect me massively i'll probably just need a few games to get back there and then just continue but my practicing mm-hmm. has been amazing so i'll just take it from there well that uh, sounds uh, perfect to me let's uh, go to the subject where this uh, podcast is really about and that's about global darts we go to south africa um yeah where did you start to play darts how did you play start to play darts so my dad george peterson he um 
the our family, my dad's side, they had a team, and my dad has been playing for fifty years now. So darts has always been part of our family. But generally, we we um, my brother used to play football, and I wanted to be an aspiring footballer, and quickly realized that football you need to be an exceptional talent to obviously play at a very high level, which obviously I aspire to. And then I shifted over to darts, and darts then obviously um, was a real escape for me in the sense of the area that I grew up in. Um, it's, there was a lot of gangsterism, drugs, um, drug abuse, and, and so on and so forth. But that is the general consensus of the area. The area that I grew up was nothing like that. So um, for me, basically, I, I took to darts because the family obviously played, but I, I put in loads of time into the game itself and quickly realized that I could I could actually move on. And then in 2009, I think it was, I, I won literally every single trophy available to me and that would be the second time. And then I thought, well, let me try and move over to the UK and play professionally. And it was always a dream of mine because we used to watch DVDs and, and see the likes of mm -hmm. Phil Taylor, Eric Bresto. Eric Bresto was more on VHS cassette. Uh, Andy Ford and Chris Mason, Kevin Painter, those are the cassettes I had. And and then we started getting DVDs and then, yeah, my aspirations was to become a professional. And then came over in 2000 and I think it was 2010 season um, for the, the world champs and then stayed and became a professional, which was a dream come through for me and still living the dream currently now. Yeah, well, what a great uh, story. Uh, going back to the darts in South Africa, um yeah, did you start playing? Are there any bars or clubs like you living now in England, or is it a little bit the same, or, or is it do totally different in South Africa? It's completely different. Um, we don't have a lot of bars. We don't have the bar culture. Um, a lot of it is uh, very homely. So, yeah, our, our, ours was played at like sports wall halls um, and, and 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 just recreational walls basically, and kind mm -hmm. of in different areas and generally when you get to darts it would be somebody that introduces you to darts because darts is not obviously broadcasted on tv now we have stream so players are more or people are more um are prone to watch it on the stream but back in the day there was there was no we never used to get darts on we needed to get about purchase a vhs cassette or dvd um, of a recorded world championships or recorded majors that was broadcasted in the uk and globally so yeah it wasn't it it, it would Generally, if you played darts, it would be you'd either be a family member, a cousin, a, 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 a do you know what I mean, a friend, and yeah. get really interested. Darts is quite easy. Um, it's easy, accessible, and economic, and you can get addicted to it quickly. Um, which obviously, in my family, darts is always so. Every family gathering, there was a darts game, or cousins used to play, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I think in in South Africa itself, uh, my dad belong to a club called uh, West Point, which was in Mitchell's Plain, where I started my, my career in my amateur career. And then, yeah, Mitchell's Plain obviously quickly became one of the best teams in South Africa. Um, and then we obviously got some great honors and really great uh, players. Many of them pro, uh, represented pro tier level. Some of them even mm -hmm. came from, from Mitchell's Plain and played on the PDC stage as well. So, yeah, a lot of talent is coming from, from, from Mitchell's Plain area, which I'm prone for. And, yeah, it's, 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 it's completely different to what you are used to um, everywhere else in the world. It's spread over the entire part, all most of the parts of South Africa. I mean, um, darts, like I said in, in, initially, it was it's easily accessible. So, a lot mm -hmm. of the times, uh, like the teams that we play against, we have about in South Africa with Darts South Africa, which is the the mother body of um, the amateur mother body in South Africa. They have about five to six thousand registered members, and then you have um, um, unregistered players, which is kind of like not breakaways, but just people that play socially. So I think they, in, in that regard, those those numbers haven't been measured, but I, I'd, I'd assume it'd be exactly or similar to what um, Dart South Africa has. And these, these this is scattered all over. Like if I look at just my area in Cape Town, so you have like, I think there's, there's 10 associations within Cape Town. So for example, wow. every every area has its own kind of association where you will have potentially between 100 to 200 members in an association. Then the further you go up, let's say, for example, so Cape Town obviously being a city, so there's a loads of um, players in that area. Then the further you move out or up towards 
um, Johannesburg, Durban, um, to the left, the northwest. There's, there's the players get less, but the quality still there's still a great amount of quality of players as well. So, and we have a national event every single year where you have the top one thousand six hundred players, uh, men, women. Uh, and youth as well, all congregate and, and participate to obviously be crowned the champions of South Africa. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's it's massive, and I think the structure is conducive to getting professionals to another level. It's just we we don't have the support culture yet, or or the media culture yet, or, or the the paying the paying spectator culture as well. So those three yeah. things obviously need to need to align for us to get to the stage level. But yeah, we're building and I'm 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 assisting in that in that area. And next um hopefully 2021 we will launch our JDC Academy, uh the ICANN African Warrior JDC Academy in South Africa, Mitchell's Plain as well. So yeah, hopefully we'll get some professionals coming through there. Um definitely aspiring professionals as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what what I understand of you is that South African darts is actually bigger than most people uh, think it is. Um, let's let's go to the start of your career, or at least um, one of the first big tournaments you um, the people could see you, and it was the South African Masters in two thousand nine. Um, yeah, you played John Part over there. Yeah, how how was that to be on that stage? It was a dream come true. Literally that year, I lost in the final to Les Francis. Um, he played really well. He's also a pro tier. He was a pro tier player at the time. I beat Vane and Havenga, which represented um, South Africa on the world stage a year be before, two years before that, which is fantastic. And obviously, meeting and having shoulders with the likes of Phil Taylor, I think Wayne Mardell, James Wade was there, Mervyn King was there, uh, John Part. Um, to name but a few, those those was amazing moments for me, and that's what sparked me to come over. Because at that point in time, I spoke to uh, Matt Porter and Dave Allen, and they said, "Why don't you come over next year? We will be having the the Q schools, or two years time, we will be having Q schools. Just have a try and see what happens." And then, um, yeah, it, it was it was um, um, that is basically where where it was born really. And and I remember the game as well against John Part. I missed uh, a few doubles. John Part played exceptionally well, but I think that I held my own against John Part. And I didn't play really to a level that I think I can play, but I think that also just the nerves and the exposure and knowing that I'm playing against John Part, which is a two-time world champion, was something kind of kind of new for me. But now it's mm -hmm. it's it's quite different with me being um, having I think it's seven or eight years of pro experience and yeah, competing against these boys day in day out. Yeah, um, it worked out really well in 2011. You got your tour card and also your first appearance on the World Championship with also your first win on the World Championship. Um, after that, you appeared another six times on the World Championship, if I'm right. Um, yeah. When you're walking in South Africa, do people recognize you? Yeah, well, from a, from a, I think now it's different, though. Like back then, it wasn't like darts is not as popular as it is over here. So you you more known here than I am in South Africa for my sport itself. But now I'm slowly but surely, obviously, because of social media and exposure and streaming and so on and so forth, people are getting to understand and recognize. Um, this. But it's not it's not like celebrity crazy status. It's not like that. It's still it's still very much um, on the on the low down. And, and but I'm not that kind of person anyways. But yeah, I think from a, if you are a dark player, then you will know of Devin Peterson and you will know of the things that I want to achieve within the country itself. So. My profile, for example, is not is not a massive thing for me. It's more what my profile can influence and create um, new uh, professionals coming through or aspiring professionals and just getting mm -hmm. them on the right track. Because back then, I never had anybody like showing me or having the examples that I will have now or the experience because it's massive for, for kids to come over. But understanding what's needed when you get here is another whole ball game, and nobody ever told me that. So I had to learn the hard way. And, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather want to help these South African kids coming through now. Yeah, we're going to talk more about South African uh, development in darts uh, later on. First, I want to go to what I think is maybe, um, besides the World Championship, the most important tournament for South African darts too, and that's the PDC World Cup of Darts. Um, yeah, do you share this opinion with me, or? 
one hundred percent. It's one of the the areas is which um, the the players can be exposed to exactly what it is to play on the stage, the lights, the camera, the crowd, the also the competing on that level as well, because obviously we've had a whole host of players, the likes of Graham Fulby, Liam O'Brien, Vernon Powers, Nolan Arnsa, um, Sean Hogan, Shaw Peterson. All of these players, I don't think uh, Dion Oliver as well. These players have all then obviously came to the to the to the World Cup stage and performed at at a level, and just showing you exactly what um, Dart is about in South Africa. And I think that the World Cup is an amazing platform because immediately you're not alone on the stage. So you have you'll have a pro, uh, myself as the experienced pro guiding them through the the, the tournament. It's not going to be the best for them. As in, they won't take. Some of them take to it like a duck to water, but some of the other guys obviously need some some mental assistance and guidance, and and just keeping it all in because it's it is a lot to kind of gather if you don't keep your focus. And yeah, I think it's one of the best tournaments we can have as as a as a country, and it also gives us an opportunity to shine as a country together. So yeah, it's fantastic, and I I enjoy it as well because we host qualifying events in South Africa, which gather mm-hmm. some sort of of momentum towards the the world cup and get people involved get kids involved watching it um they tune in they they support you from from pillar to post so it's fantastic for for just the the sport in general and the the global appeal that it does get as well as the exposure within our in our country itself yeah i think uh, i think uh, you're absolutely right in that um well to link those qualifiers for the south african world cup of darts team um, I think a big part of that is the last man last man standing tournament. Uh, Vernon Bowers won that tournament last year and got to participate with you at that tournament. Um, yeah, this year the World Cup is yeah we don't really know if it's maybe cancelled. Um, is it difficult for you to, um, as somebody who is close to the last man standing tournament? Yeah, I think it's it's quite hard though because it's something that we we enjoy hosting. Um, the Last Man Standing was a tournament. Uh, uh, the name Last Man Standing came from exactly when I I started the first events as the qualifiers to get the players over, and just epitomizes exactly what darts is about. The 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 the, the it's it's individual and the last man. He's come through a lot of things, and the Last Man Standing is ultimately is the worthy winner. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. Vernon Powers played really well. He's, he's he had massive form the year that year, and it carried through. and And he played really well on the on the world stage. Um, but this year, I don't know if if hosting a qualifier is potentially possible because obviously of everything that's happening and getting a venue and all of those things. So potentially, it might just be where a selection. There's a selection criteria or just a player nominated um, by myself or assisted by the PDC. I have no idea how we're going to approach this because it's it's obviously unprecedented times and it's something that we can't categorize or look at as a as a um, as a norm basically. So yeah, I think I think we would it's it's something that we're going to need to tackle, but it will only be able to understand when w- what we can do at the time once the tournaments are um, hosted or named or, or announced in a sense on the calendar because for this moment in time everything's kind of up in the air and, and 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 i think the world cup major is not it's not for lack of not lack of respect but just looking at it from a point of view as in it might just be where the 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 world cup of darts might take a back foot because obviously we need to put in the ranking majors as the world cup of darts is not a ranking major so i don't know i i hope that we do host it but it's not a massive train smash if we don't because i understand that things need to happen and decisions need to make, be made this mm. year yeah well let's see how how that goes um first bring us back to the th- the 2019 event of the last man uh, standing tournament um is it slowly becoming a more continental African thing, or is it still a South African uh, tournament? So the so the, the difference between the two is because of the World Cup being South African team, um, it that is purely registered for South Africans only because obviously we need to have a representation of South Africa. Um, but the World Champs is a Pan African World Champ qualifier, which incorporates different players. So we get players from Zimbabwe. Um, uh, Lesotho, um, Namibia, 
all of the outskirts of, of South Africa, as well as obviously South Africans playing it. So, yeah, what we want to do is because of traveling costs that are so expensive in South Africa and with it being a third world country and also then also not having um, very not it's it's more it's 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 quite expensive for the players to travel and for only one player to get the spot is quite hard so you really need to um get to a to a level and then compete and and kind of throw in all the chips and say listen i'm I'm ready to compete at this level so i'm going to give myself a, a chance at the world champ qualifier so yeah i think we where we at now is it's definitely has a global of global feel the one thing that i need um to say is is that the support that we've experienced from South Africans have been amazing. At first, we used to have like 150, uh, 180 players competing for the one spot. Now it's it's at a point where it's very serious. The the entry level, um, the entry uh, um, cost for it is slightly higher because obviously cost in in South Africa is slightly higher for venues and all of these things. But then you're also looking at um, the player that is entering in these tournaments, they are actually the cream of the crop. These are players that are informed that actually have a chance. So you you scaling down, so you get in a quality tournament, but with a with a smaller quantity, which is fantastic for us. And that's the reason why we also wanted to host a, a kind of similar tour um, for these players representing or playing or participating on in the last man standing events. But yeah, it's it's all in the making and, and obviously get in there. And, and once we get there, we might be able to invite the World Series to come to Cape Town and then, mm-hmm. yeah, um, push it forward. But how we how we work in it now is it's just it's slowly but surely because it's all it's all fin- funded by myself, um, some assistance by the PDC. Um, and some some companies in South Africa as well. But now where we're at now is just slowly gathering momentum and, and obviously COVID-19 doesn't help, but I'm sure 2021 will be fantastic for South African darts. Yeah, I think those are great developments in South Africa. Um, let's talk, talk more about uh, African darts now in general. Um, yeah, we have only seen one African country, which is th- South Africa and the PDC or BDO World Championship. Um, yeah, does this bother you or, and how to grow the darts in Africa? The thing is, is because South Africa has, I mean, Africa has so many countries in it and it's, it's one of the bigger continents. Um, it's, it's massive though. And, and for me to, if I look at what I'm trying to achieve, I have to look at a focus point and because of where I'm from being South Africa, that's why it's my focus point. I know that the numbers that we have in South Africa are massive with regards to dark players. So that's the reason why I looked at that. What we're looking to do is, is actually grow it in a, in, a, in different areas like the likes of Zimbabwe, Lesotho, uh, Malawi, um, Angola, um, also Namibia. But with that, it, it stretches our funding, it stretches everything else. So it makes it slightly harder, but we do have plans and we have had plans. It's just executing them at the right levels and getting them to a point and finding the right representatives in those countries to actually um, spearhead it for us, which is which is one of the toughest things because obviously at this point in time, it's not a salaried um uh, position so ultimately people have to give up their free time to actually do this and this is besides their own darting time plus their family time and work time so there's only mm-hmm. 24 hours in the day so people find it difficult and i know that there's there's loads of because i've encountered loads of places we play um in south africa we have a it's it's called the african cup of nations like it's zone six i think it's called still um and that's where we compete against different African countries. And when we play against these African countries, these players are really good. Um, David Nyemba, he's a Zimbabwean international. Yeah. He's for a long time been an African legend and the godfather of darts in South Africa. And then you've got, um, yeah, his son as well, Kutz uh, Nyemba. So there's 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 a, a whole host of, of, of players coming through or players that are there in Africa that are really good that I think that can compete on this level. It's just that making it um, accessible for them, which is quite hard because obviously understanding the background of Africa and the poor communities or underprivileged communities that don't have access to funds and so on and so forth, which, which makes it difficult. But this is life and and, and that's why obviously I'm... I'm, I'm trying with my team uh, back home to to kind of spearhead and get more South African and African professionals to the PDC so that they can experience and um, experience in the joy of living a dream. 
Yeah, uh, well, you're you're already talking about a more uh, continental African tournament. Uh, we have seen multiple African countries at the WF World Cup. Kenya, Zimbabwe, Uganda, Botswana, Seychelles, Namibia and Egypt. Um, are these also the countries... Well, my first question is, are these the countries where the most development is going on? And my second question is, is it time for a WF African Cup? Yeah, I think I think there's there's definitely because also how widespread the countries are um, within on the continent itself, it makes it slightly harder. So people, so there'll need to be sufficient prize fund and all of those things. Because if you look at Egypt to South Africa, it's a massive difference uh, distance. Do you know what I mean? So you'll have to find a central point. So logistically, it's a it's a nightmare. And I think that where we're going to from here is potentially getting in each of those areas, getting the last man standing brand in those areas so that they can host tournaments so that. We we can get the, the cream of the crop and fly them into a central position where they can compete for the top ranks in 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 Africa itself. And this is this is what we aspire to do, and this is part of our five year plan. Um, and also then getting obviously the PDC involved and so on and so forth. But obviously bringing them all together and magnetizing it into one in, into one area is is quite difficult. And we constantly we constantly up against challenges with uh, logistical issues, but. I think that those areas that you just mentioned, those are areas or de areas that development is happening. And I know that because darts is such a, a, a widely streamed or yeah, streamed um, or watched sport itself and, and easily accessible, everybody or in those areas will probably have a dartboard in a hall or at their homes and so on and so forth, which makes it easier for us now with the online uh, position. So, yeah, I think I think this is probably a perfect time and it's and it's probably just come from an idea that I'm thinking about now is probably create an, an African um, online league where you can actually potentially compete online and then logistically it, it wouldn't be an issue, which could be which could be a way that we play as well. Well, oh, that's a uh, that's a great development. Let me know if you're going uh, through with that ID. Um, let's go to one of the last things I want to talk about. That's the PDC Africa qualifier for the World Championship. Um, the last couple of times we mostly saw players from South Africa and Zimbabwe. Um, is Zimbabwe uh, the second country in darts in Africa? Do you think? Yeah, I think I think the likes of David Nyemba. Uh, Kudzi Nyemba, their team um, that they have around them are, are really great. Uh, Lesotho is also one of them uh, that I know of. Um, I know that, like, I don't, I don't really know a lot about the, the, the other teams um, or the top players because the top players that I've experienced or played. But looking back now, I've the last time I played in South Africa competitively was ten years ago. So there could be massive improvements um, with other players that, and this is this is the reason why. I, I go back often to find out who's playing well, um, yeah, and, and host the court tournament so that you can actually see the potential. But a lot of the potential now is coming from Mitchell's playing in the youth side, and hence us obviously pushing the JDC. But I think that, like you said, now Zimbabwe is definitely and always has been one of South Africa's um, fiercest competitors in the African Cup of Nations, and yeah, they con they continuously be. Um, they are continuously our, our our hardest opponent within Africa itself. So yeah, I think that we 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 definitely uh, the birth of of different events now and opportunities. So yeah, I think that we could we could we could definitely move from here on out and and it could be could be something something crazy that could happen now because of what we're experiencing with the online darts and how easy it is to set up and just making sure everybody's kind of set up is, is a massive thing. So yeah, I think that I'm going to probably sit down now after this call and kind of plot mm -hmm. that out for me. Well, that's uh, that's per perfect. Um, to end this post podcast, the last broad question. Um, if you have to think of darts in South Africa or Africa in general, general in the uh, five years that are coming, what will the future of South African darts be like? I think uh, my vision for it is is definitely host having a few JDC um, academies in South Africa itself um, and broadening it out to Africa as well because obviously JDC will be able to now uh, incorporate an online system where players logistically they compete um, within the area but then they um, attach to a global ranking which will give them a so they don't have to be in a specific place to compete against players which is a great way to actually rank players that obviously is globally um, 
that have a global uh, logistical air, uh, nightmare, basically, to get to areas like the UK or Europe itself. So, yeah, I think that more and more uh, JDC uh, academies that gives our players a lot more opportunity. And then also from a, a last man standing perspective and dots in South Africa, I think that we will look at hosting uh, more tour events and also then more majors. Um, but this will be obviously come from funding and stuff like that, which is which is one of the the, the the nightmares that we are experiencing. But yeah, I think that our our our, our talent is unquestioned is not doesn't have to be questioned because um, what we have and we, what we've shown, we do have the talent and potential to obviously become professionals. It's just that the exposure and hosting those tournaments is is what we need so i think that the next step now is, is actually getting the commitment from the players and then running forth and pushing forth with a with a south african kind of pdc style tour which will be which will be fantastic to have if if, if we can i think uh, those will be great developments in the future uh devon peterson thank you for joining uh, our podcast and telling more about the uh, south african darts thanks thank Thanks a lot, Pim. Thanks for having me and hopefully you guys are entertained.